Okay, so in this video that's been in progress for a while, getting all these pieces together, I'm going to be building a new system for the family, which is a family shared computer. This is mainly for Facebook and eBay and whatever else. Uh, it plays a bit of Minecraft, plays a bit of Roblox, stuff like that when the kids go on it. And it's made up pretty much entirely from parts that I had hanging around or I've picked up for really, really cheap. The case is the only thing brand new along with these sticks of RAM that are here. So the case came off some website, that's a Cooler Master N200. And then we've also got these memory modules here which were from Amazon and these are two 4GB DDR3 sticks. They are 1333 MHz which is PC3 10600. So we've got 8 gigs of RAM, we've got a Intel Pentium processor, this is the Pentium G3240 CPU. This I got uh, the chip and the motherboard in a bundle off the car boot sale for a fiver. If you go to my previous videos you can see where I bought these and diagnosed in. It turned out the board they came with is dead, which is actually a good point. So that's a brand new board as well that's going into this build. It's just a stock Intel cooler because that's all it really needs. We've got a Corsa CX500 power supply powering the system. This cost me £2 from a car boot sale and it's in like new condition. Still got the sticky protective over it and it's pretty much spotless. So that's going to be powering this whole build because I'm going to put in my old MSI GTX 560 Ti which is what this card is here. This is the 1GB version. It's got two DVI-Is and a mini HDMI on the outputs. It's got 1 gig of VRAM and it's been a really good card. I mean, this was my first really decent uh, high ticket price card that I ever owned and used. And it's never done me wrong. Then I've also got a solid state drive here, which is a SanDisk SSD. This is only a 64 gigabyte, but this was in a build that I did for my brother a while back, a gaming build. And obviously 64 gig isn't a massive amount so that's been upgraded recently to 120 gig which made this redundant so this is now going into this system to make it start up quickly for so, uh, just going on the internet and things like that then we've also got a Seagate 500 gigabyte hard drive this is one of their video 3.5 hard drives this actually came from a uh, skybox I think it was or a freebie recorder or something along the lines of that some sort of a video recording set top box so the speeds aren't going to be blisteringly fast on it but it will be able to store a lot of data. So this is mainly going to be holding pictures and things like that. And maybe the odd game or two, depending on what the kids put on it. We've then got a Lightscribe DVD rewriter, dual layer, CD rewriter, and a Blu-ray disc reader going in here. This was from a car boot sale. This was £2, I think, maybe £3. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I may as well put it in here. I've not got anything else that requires one at the moment. The other thing I've got to go in the system, which I haven't actually got here now, is a 3.5 inch uh, flop front card reader, so we can put camera cards and things in. It's just so much easier. So anyway, I'm going to pull the case out of the box and everything else and get it sort of ready to start building. Okay, so here's the case out of the box, and this is actually the main reason this has been so long in the making this build. Because I've ordered this case from three different places and been refunded from them before I landed on the company that I purchased it from this last time that is now here. And I had to buy it from Germany and it'd be shipped here. And they were actually the cheapest company as well um, at the time when I ordered it. But it wasn't in stock anywhere and it's been discontinued at a lot of places. But I really wanted this case for this build because it's just nice, neat and tidy. It's not got any gamery LED flashing RGB rubbish anywhere. And no windows or anything else like that. It's just going in a living room. It doesn't want to be loud or a feature point or anything. It just wants to be a neat little machine that sits away in the corner quietly and does its job. Which this case looks quite aesthetically pleasing. And it's got all the basics you need. Your front panel connectors, one disk drive, one front bay which is going to be for the card reader. And that's it really. I believe it does come with fans and stuff. 
but if not I've got fans anyway, there's a lot of mounting options and stuff in it. But yeah, let's crack this open and get on to putting stuff inside it. So let's open this up. And now we can see all the cables are here bunched together. It's a bit low light, I'll have to sort that out in a second for you. But yeah, all the cables are bunched here. And it's got a silica gel and the screws and accessories as well. So let's get these out. I'll need that silica gel for my microphone case. So I'll put that to one side. But yeah, quite a lot of accessories come with it. Rubber mounts, everything, cable ties. This should be pretty good. I can see we've got one fan at the back here and one fan at the front, which that's fine. There's a space for another one at the front here, which I may install. It depends what I've got in my box of bits. We've got the USB 3 header, the USB 2 header, the audio header, and all the front panel connectors for the LEDs and resets. All your standard things. The fans are on the Molex connections, but then they can also be on standard fan headers on the motherboard, which I'm probably going to run them off the motherboard. Because I want this to be a quiet system. And we've got SSD mounting abilities here. Uh, up here as well so we can put two SSDs in, we can put a couple of hard drives in okay so the problem with this being black is it absorbs loads of light but yeah just a quick jump back to my other point it is really hard to find cheap cases that aren't tacky looking like they're all gaming cases and they try and outdo themselves instead of just doing a a simple design like this has. They, they just they don't look nice in my opinion. There's nothing that's nice for you know what you give to your mum and dad, which is what this is kind of going to be used by my mum and dad most of the time anyway. We don't need an all singing, all dancing, fancy pants case. We just need something nice and basic. It's not a nice one. So yeah, anyway, I'm just going to unplug these Molex to fan things off both the fans. And put them to one side, because I'm very unlikely to need them. And I'm going to first install the motherboard, I think. So I'll get the standoffs and put them in. We've got two already fitted. We need another one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. Okay, so something that's important to check is your screws when you get these uh, cases and things because they'll be threaded in different ways and require different types of screws in different areas so in the instructions you usually get something like this that tells you what each thing's for now obviously the standoffs are for the motherboard tray to hold the motherboard up <clears throat> but you also get some of these screws here which look the same but they're actually different now if you look on the back you can see some of them have got sort of teeth on them, and others haven't. So we've got five of them here without teeth, and the others there have all got teeth. So if you look here, we've got five of them. These are for the power supply and the lock buckle thing. So the lock buckle is this. This is what you put through the back if you want to put a padlock on the case. For example, there's a little slit here. And if we put this through... You can then screw it in and you can put a padlock through when you put the side panel on to stop people going in and messing. But I don't need that. So I'm not going to be fitting this. But you can see the metal work is already threaded to accept that particular screw. And you can damage it by putting the wrong type in. So always do check these out. It also explains what the rubber things are for. And the screws there that have got sort of spaces on them. We've got little tiny screws here. And that sort of goes over what's for what. So we can see here what we need to use where. But I won't be using a lot of the screws on here because I'm not filling the case with everything you possibly can. You'll always have some screws left over. Okay, so something that I always do before I put the motherboard in is put the CPU into the socket, which I've just done. And also put the paste on, put the heatsink on, and put the memory modules in. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm just going to put some paste on the CPU. You don't need a massive amount, but you don't want to put too little on there either. Well, that should be good. Now, let's get the cooler. Normally these do come with paste pre-applied, but I've had this on and off of a few boards, so 
it's been used up by now. So I've just put my own on. I'm going to make sure that it is not locked. So if you look at the top on the arrows, they want to be turned that way. They're not locked. And then we sit it in the holes in the board. Ensure that they're all through. And then you can push them down and they will click in. Do this diagonally to apply even pressure onto the CPU. Then we can plug the CPU fan into the CPU fan header. And that's our cooling taken care of. I like to try and neaten it up where possible and run it around the edges like that. So let's get the memory modules in. These are pretty simple. Pull the clips back, get the memory, line up the notch in the stick with the notch and the board socket, put them over the top, push down, and it clicks in. Do it again with the next one. Just pushing down from the top, watch, and it's in. And those are installed. Great. So the board is now ready to go in. The next thing you're going to need is the I.O. shield, which you're going to want to push into the back of the case. And then you also need to install the standoffs in appropriate places. Now we can see this board requires two, four, six screws. It doesn't require the extra roll, which I thought it did, but no it's not, it's a shorter board. You get different lengths and heights of motherboards, so make sure you put the screws in the appropriate places. Because if you put a standoff in the wrong place, then it can shut out some of these contacts and knock at your motherboard. Okay, so putting the I.O. shield in is really simple. Make sure that it's the right way around. And you can see it's got these little clips on it. They just clip into the slot. So if we go inside the case, and I line this up, I can push this in. And just go around it and make sure all the clips are in. And then be able to poke it and it not fall out. So that's in and now we're ready to put the standoffs in and then screw the motherboard in. Okay so when doing the standoffs it can be a good idea to get your motherboard out the side of the case and look. Now you can see this screw here will correlate to this one and that one there will correlate to that one. So we need to put one in this corner which there will only be one in most cases. So we will put that one in. a little bit for a minute then we've got another one here which is directly in line pay attention to this one because there are two positions this one can go in in some cases so we put that in and now we've got those four there's now the bottom ones to do which is this one here And this one over here. And you'll notice that these two are in line again on the board and in the case. Okay, so now those are just sort of finger tight in a little bit. You want to use this tool if your case comes with one. This is the tool for screwing these in. It's got like a socket on the top and a screw on the other side. So you can put a screwdriver in and tighten them. Not all cases will come with these. If your case doesn't, use a pair of pliers and just turn them with that. But don't turn them too far if you're doing that. Because if you do, then the motherboard isn't going to stay in place. So let's just tighten these up. Not putting too much pressure on. Just turning it until it comes to a stop. And then a little bit of a turn. Check the factory installed ones as well if your case came with some ready fitted. I'm just turning it with even force. Then it stops there, so I will just give a little bit more of a turn. And that just ensures that it's secure. Okay, so now all of those are in and tightened up, we can drop the motherboard in. Now this, hold the board by the heatsink and you're literally just lining it up and slotting it in at the back first and then sitting it down onto the standoffs we've installed. 
so that's lined up at the back and you can see that it's now also lined up with the screw hole so I'm going to put in the motherboard screws checking the manual for the appropriate ones and I'm going to start with this one I will generally always start with this screw because it's in the middle of the case so that holds the motherboard in place whilst we then fit everything else again with these screws don't over tighten them just turn them until it starts to stop going and then give it a little bit more of a turn just so they're not wobbling around loose okay so that's the motherboard screwed in place I'm now going to put the power supply in which is the big box with all the wires on which makes everything look a big mess so let's go and drop that in some cases you can install the power supplies in more than one way so you can fit it that way with the fan taking air from in the case or the other way around with it taking air in through the bottom of the case depending on your case this one's vented and has a filter on the bottom you can see the filter is here for the bottom fan intake that collects the dust so you can just wash that out also don't use this bottom intake if you're going to stand your computer on the carpet because you will suffocate the power supply if it's standing on a soft surface like a carpet or something, put the fan sucking from in the case. Or if it's going on the desk or a table or something that's hard where the airflow can get under it, put it down is generally the best. So I'm going to install mine facing downwards. Like so. We just slide that in. You can now see about the mess I was talking about of cables that have just filled this case. So let's just screw this in first and we can sort the cables out with. It's pretty simple, just four screws hold this in. You can see these holes there, but there's also a hole here. Depending on which way you put the power supply in, you will use one set or the other set of the holes. So I'm going to use the screws appropriate for the power supply, as it says in the manual, which are these ones here. And I'm going to start with this bottom corner here. And I'm just going to screw it in. Okay, so those four screws are in and the power supply is now nice and secure. So let's tip this case up. So now I've got all of this mess coming out of the case. I'm just simply going to sort out what I'm likely to use and what I'm not going to use at all. So, you're always going to need the main connector, the 24 pin. I'm also going to need the Pentium 4 power temp connector, the 4 or 8 pin. In this case it's 8 clipped together, but you pull it apart and it's a 4. Because we're putting a graphics card in, I will also need these PCI Express power connectors. Or at least one of them. I think the card actually uses two, so we'll probably need both of those. And then you always get lots of these which are SATA cables. So Molex, SATA, stuff like that. These plug your CDs, DVDs and hard drives in. Now, I'm having one hard drive, one SSD, and one DVD drive. So literally, all I'm going to need at the bottom is two connectors, and all I'm going to need at the top is one. Now, the SATA connectors on them both, so this is completely useless, this one here, and I definitely won't be using that cable. So I'm just going to wrap that up and tuck it into the bottom. So it's kind of out of our way. And I'm going to use the double one up to the top and I'll use the triple one down at the bottom because we may add a third hard drive at some point in the future. So I'm going to run these up behind the back of the case into these little holes here. These are for cable management so you can run your cables up the back, hidden and pop them out where they're needed. So I'm going to run up this cable up to the CPU power because that's in the top corner up here. I'm going to run this one behind there if I can make it fit and pop that out about here and plug it in. And I'm also going to run this one up to the top, which is for the DVD Blu-ray drive. So let me open the back panel. Okay, so what's also become apparent now I've turned the case around is that there's this nice generously sized gap here that I can hide stuff in the hard drive bay. So because there's no hard drive going in there at the moment, I'm going to pull through that cable that I don't need and sort of tuck it out the way in there. So that's completely away from all the rest of the wiring and nothing is going to bother it. This one here is for the graphics card which we'll need but I'm going to put that in there too at the moment. 
I'm going to pull through the cables that we want to pull through to the top, which are this one, this one, and this big one, if we can get this big one through. I don't know if there's enough room. The reason I'm not sure about the room is because of this tray having this edge on it and obviously it being so close to the side there's not a lot of depth here to play with so I've just checked the case side panel here and you can see it's got this bump in it which is to allow you to put the cables up through here so we should just get away with that so I'm going to post it up there now I need to get this one up to the top though but there's no hole to put it through in this case I don't believe Normally you would have a hole somewhere up here where you can tuck this one through and plug it in which doesn't seem to be the case in this case so it may have to come through here or maybe pop out behind the motherboard but I'll have a see what I can do with that this SATA one for the power for the DVD drive is really easy it's literally just going to go up here and pop out there and plug in I'll probably leave this connector inside because we don't need the second connector and then this motherboard one is just going to go through here as well and plug in to the connector that's there we can then cable tie them all in using these loops on the back okay so it may look like a great mess but it's actually not that bad I've got these cables plugged in now I've also well minus the DVD drive one because I've not put that in but I have plugged in the motherboard ones, I've got them through. I've also plugged in the ones for the front USB and the headphone and the microphone ports and stuff. And I've also connected up the power switch and the power and hard drive LEDs, which are what all these little ones are here running across the bottom. I brought them all in here and then I've run them across at the bottom to where they can go out of the way, where they're not on show or in the way of anything else. I'm going to turn it around and I'll show you. Now these are quite fiddly and boring which was why I didn't show connecting them up, the front panel connectors. This is the USB 3 one which is the big thing, it just plugs straight in. We've then got down here, this is the HD audio, that's the audio connector. These are all marked and wrote on the motherboard by the way and if you look in the manual you'll see where they go. But the audio is usually always in this corner near the back audio outputs. This is the USB, they're, ma they're usually marked FUSB, which are these two here. So this one is for the front USBs, and then I'm going to plug the card reader into here. And these ones here, marked F panel, these are for the front panel switches, lights, stuff like that. So the only thing that really matters with these, that you get the right way around, is the polarity. So if you look on the connectors, there's a plus and a minus on the LED ones for the hard drive and power. So make sure you match that to the markings over on the motherboard, if you can see them on this board, it's right under here. But failing that, look in the manual, make sure the plus is the plus and the minus is the minus, otherwise the lights won't work and come on on the front of the case. Okay, so the next thing I feel like dropping in is the DVD drive up here. So I need to get this blanking plate out the front and then put the drive in. That'll slide in from the front and then put the screws in. So what well, if we got some clips in here maybe to push? There's usually a clip or something to get it out. That is if you can get your hand up to it properly. Okay, so an easy way is to even take the front panel off, which on this case, all of the connectors are completely separate, which is really nice, because this is just a piece of plastic then. So to do that, I'd literally, I just put a screwdriver in, and I will go and turn it down, and these push clips will come loose. And then you can see the clips here, which are holding these front panel grills in. So I'm just going to push that out, and it comes in on this particular case. So there's that one out. And then the next one, which I presume will also be the same. Yep. And there's number two. So there's the front panel things removed. I'm now going to put the front panel back on, which it just clips into this case. Some of them may have four or six screws, usually in the corners and the middle. So check that out as well before just ripping your front off. But 
yeah, now I'm just going to slot the DVD drive in, which is here, ready to go. Let me take a bit of jiggling around. It's nice and tight. So then you want to line this up with the front panel and then screw it in. These are just a slit to allow for wherever your drive's going to sit. So you could have it sat back, you could have it forward a bit, which that looks daft. I would usually have it flush or in a touch like that with a slight recess around it. So I'm going to screw this in now and uh, then we'll fit the card reader later on. I can't do that at the moment because it's in the PC that's in use. So here's another screw difference example. ODD is optical disk drive and there's four thumb screws for that. Which have got a different thread for the other thumb screws. Which I didn't actually notice at first so I just put them all together. You can see between this one and this one. That this has got a fatter thread on it. It isn't as long as this one. So yeah. These are the four for the DVD drive. So whilst these are thumb screws, we'll literally just put them in and turn them. Don't even need a screwdriver. Just make them tight so it doesn't move in. You may sometimes need a screwdriver though for some of these if the where this one is at the front. Sometimes they're so far forwards that you can't actually get your fingers in to turn them. So then just use your screwdriver. Or you can tighten them with a screwdriver as well if you want to. So flip it around and do the back. Okay, so that's the screws on the back side done. We can now plug the power in. And we also need to start putting the data cables in. So the one for the information to flow over. So these just push in. They've got an L shape on them. And they will only go in one way. They match the L shape on the back of the drive. Same with solid state drives and hard drives. Okay, so here's one of the SATA cables I've just dug out. This is going to be for the DVD drive because it's got this little right angle connector on it on the clip. Now these are going here on this board. So normally they'd be down the bottom here. You'd run them with the power cables down and then out at the bottom. But in this case they're going to have to come out here. So there's not really any point in me putting the DVD drive one in behind there. So I think maybe if I can get a shorter length one, I'm just going to use that and put it straight through the middle here make life easy. Okay so this is the SATA data cable, I've just dug one out, this is for the DVD drive and I'm just going to put it through the middle because normally it would go with the power cables down to the bottom but in this case the way that the holes are behind the tray and where the SATA ports are on the motherboard they're up here normally these would be down here, you'd put them all down the back and bring them out at the back at the bottom and plug them in so I'm just literally going to put this through the inside of the case because there's not much point putting it anywhere else. And I'm going to make sure it's plugged into a SATA 2 port because a DVD drive won't benefit from the speeds of SATA 3. So we will use these two for the hard drive and the SSD. Okay, so it's now to the point of installing the hard drive and SSD. I'm going to put them both at the bottom in this case. And you'll notice this is now out of the case. Well, you have to unscrew this to be able to screw the drives in properly which is unfortunate, but hey, that's how it goes. You can move this further away from the front if you're installing a radiator though, which is a cool thing. So how by default it comes here, it's over here. But you can move it down to be over here a bit. So plenty more room over there. But yeah, uh, there's four screws in the bottom, in the bottom of the case that holds this in, and the two at the back as well. And it's out now. So let's first start off with, oh, let's put the hard drive in first. I don't suppose it really matters which way. And we want the connectors to be off out the back. So I'm going to put this in the top slot for no apparent reason, just because why not? And you can see it's lined up here with these holes. Same on the other side. And these are screwed in with thumb screws as well. But the ones with the bigger threads on. And that one's tight. So there's the hard drive installed. Next, the SSD, which is just two screws by the looks of it, because it's got these little pins here. So it should just sit in. Like so. And then if we put two screws in the side, that should be fastened in. Okay, so for this we use the little screws. And 
just gonna screw it in. Making sure that the connectors are pointing that way, inside of the case. The bottom screws are back in, and the ones at the back are back in. So there's the hard drive and the SSD installed, they ain't going anywhere. Next we need to get the power cables to them, so I'm going to work out the best way to do that. I've also neatened up some of the cabling running around the case, you can see here. I've put a tie in at the top around the uh, part of the casing that's not actually made for that but it's coming in handy that's keeping the four pin cable out of the way then I've also tied all of these to the uh, piece here of the case and then they're tied at the top on the back as well so they loop up and down and then run and then I've also tied all of these ones for the front panel connectors through one of these holes here which are coming handy I don't know what they're actually for but they've come in handy for cable management. Okay so I actually made a mistake when screwing this hard drive in just uh, it actually needs to be further in so it's sticking out quite a bit of that side so you use those two screw holes close together otherwise you can't put the connectors in because of it being behind the motherboard tray now there you can see it sticks out but it stops by the end of the case on the back side there's plenty of room to put the connectors in if you do it how I was doing it the drive stops there and then once you put the connectors in you can't get the case side panel on because they stick out a little bit too much so do make sure that you put the drive hanging out and not where I originally put it small things so I've now finished mounting in the hard drives I've also connected them up we've got a set of cables and we've got power cables and they're plugged into here and I've also done cable management, so you'll see there's a lot more cable ties around in the case now. Because I've done that, to make everything nice and tidy. So you can see there's a lot more cable ties hanging around. I need to cut them back, which I've not done yet, just to show you where they are, so you can see how many have gone into there. Let me pull the light in. Uh, but you can see as well, I've also found there was a hiding place here behind the power supply with two loops that you can put cable ties through where I've now hid that unused power cable but it actually is used in the end I've put one of those fan power things onto it and that's powering the fan in the front of the case down here that runs along here out of the way here and then it's just connected up to the end of the Molex you can see the SATA and the power for the hard drive there that's the spare power connector for if another hard drive is installed here that'll power that I've cable tied the USB and the SATA cables together here, keeps everything nice and neat. And obviously all this is up here as well, I think I need to put one more tie in here just to hold these back so they don't stick out. It's now ready to put the graphics card in, but I'm going to power it on using the onboard video and just check the base system is working first. So let's cut these ties down and plug this thing in. Okay, so the system is now done, I've cut all the cable ties. Um, everything is connected we should be ready to start up and go I'll quickly show you around the back you can see all the cable ties have gone I've added that extra tie at the top there so I've plugged everything in I'm using the onboard DVI output I'm going to turn the power on and then we're going to turn the system on Let's see if she starts up Power light, DVD drive, CPU fans going high speed. Oh, the monitor's gone blue, so I'm just going to keep pressing delete. Yeah, and we're into the BIOS. So everything's working fine. That front fan is a bit louder than I'd like. So I may well have to find a fan splitter. And connect it to the system fan header with the one at the back because that's going nice and slow and silently. Uh, so graphics card installed is next. I'm just going to get this to go into Windows first before I put the graphics card in. I'll put Windows 7 on it and format the hard drive and just check how the basics are working. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay so the system's done and it's running as you can see. I have got Windows installed I've done the drivers, I have run some tests on it, 
done some Windows updates because there are hundreds upon hundreds of them to do. And uh, this is sort of what we're going over all on the Windows Experience Index. I know it's not overly accurate of things, but it's it's coming in with fair scores. Now, I say I've finished this because I'm now not going to put the 560 Ti in here. That's mainly because the integrated graphics are actually a lot better than I expected they would be. So for what this computer is going to play and be used for, it doesn't warrant putting this good of a graphics card in it. I mean, I know this isn't an amazing graphics card by today's standards, but it's still pretty damn good. So I'm going to keep that for another project, and we'll just use the integrated graphics on the Pentium G3240. Now, another reason that this system is built in the way it is is this board can take 16 gigs of RAM, so I can change these 4 gig sticks to 8. It can take all the way up to Core i7s, just by changing the CPU out. So, that's another great upgrade path. We can stick a graphics card in here. We've got another PCI Express slot for whatever else I may use it for. This power supply is pretty much overkill for the system. But, we've got the connectors here now for when a graphics card gets added to it it can just be plugged in it's got an ssd to make it start up and restart lightning fast and it can multitask pretty damn well that fan isn't on at the front right now i'm waiting for a pwm splitter so i can connect it to the motherboard header here because that fan is quite loud when it's running at 12 volts not massively loud but louder than i'd like whereas now The system's near silent. If I put the sides on, you'll probably hardly be able to hear it at all. There's pretty much no noise coming from it. So yeah. I've got all the drivers installed here. I've got the latest versions. And I'm just going to restart this. And we'll do a restart test and see how long it takes. So I believe it's just starting up, there we go. I've not done anything in the BIOS yet to enable fast boot or anything like that. So this is just normal startup time. There we go. I think we're ready to use. Yeah, and we're on the internet and we're ready to go. So yeah, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> I'll have to go in the BIOS and tweak a few other things possibly. Um, but no, overall, that's that's a great result. So I'm going to close this thing up for now, and hopefully that PWM cable will arrive tomorrow. I've also added another cable, which you can probably tell this white one. That's a bit of an eyesore, but I mean, you can't see in this case anyway. It could have used being a bit longer, but it isn't, so you will be what you've got. This is the TIAC card reader. So that's now installed at the front. I went and robbed that from the existing PC, so there's just a hole in it at the moment. But yeah, and then install that splitter cable tomorrow, and then I'll show you some footage and glam shots of it from the outside. I'm just going to put these blanks in as well, because if I'm not putting a graphics card in, I don't want that open. Mm -hmm.